Hey, I've put about 8 hours of playtime into MW3 Zombies so far, and because it's so different than any other form of zombies, there's a lot to learn. So here are 13 tips for launch day to help you learn a little bit about MW3 Zombies and hopefully not make the same mistakes I did. One thing I will say before anything else is that if you were expecting MW3 Zombies to just be Outbreak 2 like it was in Cold War Zombies, then think again. It feels much different and is closer to a DMZ style experience from MW2 with its own spin on that formula. MW3 is super easy to jump into. Though Though, and after the first couple of minutes, you'll be able to understand most of what's going on if you've played any COD in the last few years. Please like the video if this does help, and maybe subscribe because I've got lots of MW3 videos in coming. Tip number one is that if you're going to play solo, then be prepared to struggle. This mode was clearly made with a focus on playing together in squads and being able to get things done quickly at the beginning of games. In solo matches, nothing is scaled down, meaning you're going to have a lot more enemies to deal with than you're probably used to, and some of the objectives are incredibly difficult even in the easiest low threat level areas. If you're going to play solo regardless of that, then I recommend doing mostly the eliminate the bounty, raid weapon stashes, or outlast objectives because those are definitely the easiest ones. Tip number two is super basic, but make sure not to die because it is costly. The new loadout system is a bit tricky to understand. Basically, you'll jump into your first match with a gun. If you were to die right away, then that gun will be lost. The only way to get more guns to start off games with is by exfilling with them, and then those guns can be used in the start of matches until you die with them again, or you'll need to use your insured weapon slot. This gun is just like any other, but if you lose it, then it comes back to you on a 3 hour cooldown timer. Like I said, be extremely careful because in my first couple of matches after some insane 1300 ping lag, I was forced to load into a match without a starting weapon and that is really not a fun time because it is super difficult to get going without any form of gun in this game. Tip number 3, do not bother standing around killing zombies that are walking around unless you are grinding camos. They only give 10 points per kill and 20 for a headshot, which makes buying anything super difficult. Most of where you will be getting points from is by completing contracts, world events like getting rid of some of the spores in the house, or finding them on the ground in ethereum containers. So focus on those mostly because it's going to save you so much time. Do not kill the zombies if you don't have to. Tip number 4, look around in any large containers you find around the map. This is because eventually you will find a tier 2 armor upgrade which gives you a permanent extra bar of armor that you can use, which is mega helpful and I assume that in the higher threat level zones there will also be a tier 3 armor upgrade as well. Tip number 5, hoard everything that you find. For completing contracts or by getting very lucky, you will be given ammo mods, raw ethereum crystals which can upgrade your gun, ether tools which are upgrade the rarity of your gun for more damage, or even more rarely you can find schematics. The schematics are insanely important so exfil with them immediately if you do get one. These can be any Anything from Ethereum tools, perks, ammo mods, or even wonder weapons. What's so important about them though is that they are permanent craftables. Once you find the speed cola schematic for example, then every 3 hours you can craft a speed cola can to start a match with. So your first game of the day eventually you'll be able to spawn in with lots of perks and even an upgraded wonder weapon right from the start. Tip number 6, when you do find stuff like perk cans or raw ethereum, you'll be given the option to use it now or to put it in your rucksack. I recommend putting them them in your rucksack, doing enough objectives to fill it up, and then exfilling. If you die with those items in your rucksack but didn't exfil, then you lose them completely. Your best bet would probably be to save up a few good ones like a juggernaut can, a few raw ethereum crystals to upgrade your gun at the start of the game, and maybe an ether tool. Then just use all of them in one game where you are eventually confident enough to go into the higher threat level zones. Tip number 8, when you have exfilled with a bunch of good stuff, do not just jump into a new game. Go over to the gear tab, enter the rucksack menu, and unequip everything you're not planning to use in the next match. It will all be stored away in the acquisition stash or the schematic crafting areas to be re-equipped later on. You can only store a limited amount of items so don't go too crazy, but the schematics are permanent like I said earlier. I wanted to point this out because it's not super obvious you need to deposit your items. If you went into a new game without doing it, then your rucksack space will be limited and obviously if you die then everything is 
lost. Tip number seven, speaking of, I really do not encourage most people to enter the high threat level areas on day one. There is a huge spike in difficulty going from the low to medium areas and it might be the biggest one in zombies history. A single pack punch gun with a purple rarity won't even be able to comfortably kill zombies very quickly, let alone the bosses and trying to complete objectives. Maybe jump in and get a bit of a feel for it, but stay close to the edges where you can just run out if need be. Tip number eight, something quirky about the zones is that each of them are almost fully separated maps. In the low threat level zone, there is all of the perk machines and a pack punch machine. Then in the medium area, there is another set of the same perks and another pack punch machine. You don't need to buy the perks twice, but just be aware that if you do find a perk machine, then it's not the only one of its kind anywhere on the map. Tip number nine, perk machine locations change. I'm not currently sure how many locations there are, but none of the perks are in the same spot every single time. You can easily find the locations though by zooming in on the map a little bit. I didn't know this for hours because it didn't show their locations on the default map view, but if you do zoom in just a little bit, it will help out and you'll definitely save a lot of time in your matches. Tip number 10, MW3 Zombies does not mess around. It is hard. Even in the low threat level area sometimes, out of nowhere, you will go from full health with an armor plate to being dead. The boss zombies can catch up to you if you're not sprinting away from them and have a ton of health, and even the regular zombies can do a surprising amount of damage very quickly. Tip number 11, unless you're in a team who is fully kitted out, do not bother with the AI humans that are around the map. They are really overpowered right now, even during the objectives that they're involved in. So it's best to just avoid them whenever they're starting to shoot at you or maybe drive by you on the minimap. Later on, they'll be useful since their strongholds and fortresses can drop really good loot, but for day one, I wouldn't risk it. Tip number 12, find a car. Seriously, this map is huge and you will need a fast way to get around. Otherwise, it's like Warzone and will become a running simulator. There's not a ton of vehicles and I really do hope that Treyarch actually changes this and adds some more because it is actually kind of scary how few there are, so take care of the ones that you do find. They're not really as durable as they were in Cold War Zombies. Tip number 13, last tip here, but it's to always make sure that you have armor plates and ammos. These are both something super important and in somewhat short supply. Armor plates are taken out in two slaps and you can only carry five of them at a time, so always make sure to keep looking for more. Same thing with ammo. Zombies do drop some, but not a lot. A few areas have ammo resupply spots, so if you find one, then stock up. Once your guns are upgraded, though this becomes much less of an issue. So there you go, hopefully all of those tips will make launch day a little bit easier because MW3 Zombies is unlike any other zombies that we've had before, including Outbreak. And it requires you to play in an entirely different way than we ever had before, so there is a big learning curve. Are you guys liking the look of MW3 Zombies so far? I've seen a lot of mixed opinions in the live stream that I did, mostly from people who haven't even played MW3 so far. I think it's going to be too different for some hardcore zombies players to enjoy a lot of it, but I do also also think it's definitely going to find a spot with a more multiplayer DMZ or Warzone style of player. Regardless of any of that, there is a lot of stuff to do in this. Seriously, I'm not even probably 15 to 20% of the way through everything that there is to do, and that's actually saying something considering I put eight hours in already. So personally, I'm still having fun and I've got so much more to do, so I gotta get back to grinding after this video. So leave a like if this did help you out and subscribe. Now go watch my video on the rise of MW3 zombies on screen right now. Thank you for watching, love you, bye bye